What's up guys? I'm going to make a very, very quick video about using the i3 window manager. In the last video I showed how to install it and its dependencies and some extras that you might want. So if you don't have this set up on your system yet, watch the last video, follow along. Good, so we've got i3 and dmenu installed and I'm going to show you how to use it. When you're just booting into the system, it will present you with a blank screen. At this point, you should have configured your mod key. So your mod key is going to be either uh, generally either the Windows key or the Alt key. I've got it configured to use my Alt key because I'm in a VM and I don't want Windows locking my screen when I push mod L. So I'm just going to show you, uh, I'm, I'm going to just going to use the word mod. So whether you're using the Windows key or the Alt key, it doesn't matter. One of the reasons to use i3 is if you want something keyboard based, especially if you're doing a lot of work in terminals, it can be a lot faster than having to point and click and hunt around a screen with a mouse. Uh, likewise, if you hate Unity or it's just too slow in a vir uh, virtual machine that doesn't have much video memory, this can also be a good reason to use something like i3, a tiling window manager. So the idea behind a tiling window manager is that it tiles. So if I hit alt enter, it will open a window that takes up as much space as is available. And it'll keep bisecting whatever space it's in to create more evenly sized windows. So if I just hit alt enter a bunch of times, it will, you can see horizontally create a bunch of windows that are all equally sized. So I can close those and the others will kind of reclaim the space that has been freed. And you close them just like any other window by either typing exit or control D to close it. Now, if you don't want them to just tile horizontally, you can press mod V and that'll start tiling vertically. So now if I hit mod enter again, it will create a new tile vertically. So again, to switch between vertical and horizontal tiling, it's alt H for horizontal. Now this will tile horizontally, or Alt V for vertical, and this will tile vertically. So those are basically the two modes that you can be tiling in. There's also floating windows, but we're not going to get into that right now. Just know that i3 is pretty good about knowing what software requires floating windows. So if you open something like GIMP, as they do in their example, all those toolbar windows and stuff will run properly. Okay, navigating around your windows. So you're going to use your mod key, and this is what's really great. Your home row in your right hand, so J, K, L, and semicolon on a US keyboard layout, are all you really need to navigate around. So mod, I'm holding done mod. J is navigating to the left. Semicolon is navigating to the right. Up is L. I always remember this with a uh, lift, like L for lift lifts me up. And K is down. So there you go. Mod J left, mod K down, mod L lifts you up, and mod semicolon is over to the right. Now they'll, they'll come around. So if you just keep going they'll start from the other side again. You can also use your arrow keys to do this, but I prefer using the home row because it doesn't require moving your hand, which is just much faster. So you can tile horizontally and vertically, but uh, if you hit mod and then some number, I'm gonna try that now. You can see I just hit mod four and that started a new workspace. So now I'm sitting on a new empty workspace. If I go back to mod one, you can see where I just was. Sorry, we were at mod two. You can see since there was nothing in four, when I went back to mod two, it automatically closed four because there's just nothing there. Now, if you want to force create a new window, like with a gap in between, like five, there's no four here, just create a window inside of it and then go back. And you can see now there's only one, two, and five. That's useful if you always have a certain thing open in a certain workspace, like you know that five is going to be your browser. Now, if you want to move something to a different workspace, you simply navigate to the tile that you want to move and then shift mod or mod shift, they both work, and then the number that you want to send it to. So we just sent that one to workspace five. You can see there it is, and it's correctly created a tile. We're gonna get rid of that. Now there's nothing else on five. So we want to send uh, the one above this to five. Oops. So we'll mod L, up into it, and then mod shift five. So the other tiles adjust. Now if we hit mod five to go to the fifth workspace, there it is. Hooray. Just a couple small other things. D menu. Let's say we go to workspace five. If we hit mod D, it'll open up D menu. This is basically something that will list apps and auto complete for you. You can see left and right keys 
navigate between the choices. I just prefer to type. So if we want to open Firefox, you just start typing in the name. When it's selected, hit enter to open it. Now I actually already had Firefox running, but you can see even with graphical applications, uh, you have the same tiling functionality. So if I open a new window, it'll just open in a new tile. It's pretty useful. You can still use tabs the same way, but obviously it's more useful to use new windows just because it's then easy to navigate with mod. The side on the left is where you want to be for, sorry, wah! Of course, closing it is no longer Control-D. That always gets me. The side on the left there is i3wm, so i3windowmanager.org, and in their docs, it's on the front page anyway, the link to this, but their user guide is really, really good. So you should check it out. You can see the default key binding there. Okay, so that's your very, very basic introduction to i3. Just play around with this. It'll make sense, and it'll become pretty natural. And using things like Unity or other graphical desktops, it can be nice and relaxing when you're working on stuff like documents or graphical apps only. But if you need 20 shells open, and sometimes you do, then this can be really, really awesome.